Uh, well, hello again. Uh, let's share in Mark's Gospel once more and see what we can find today in Mark chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 14. Uh, it's um, an interesting story. And uh, remember yesterday, uh, the Jesus and three of his disciples were up on the mountaintop. Uh, Jesus was transfigured and... Uh, that was a very special moment. Now they're coming down the mountain. Okay, so let's read from verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw this, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit and has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, he immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Uh, so they came down from the mountain, a marvellous experience up on the mountain top there. And uh, they came down and they met with the nine other disciples. And the nine were being surrounded by lots of people and they were kind of in dispute. And everyone saw Jesus coming. And so the disciples turned and went towards him because they didn't know what was going on and what they, what they could do. Um, the nine, you see, had had this boy presented to them who had a spirit in him. And obviously the nine had tried to cast the spirit out from what we read um, in a moment, but failed to do that. Um, and so now it's Jesus' turn. Uh, so Jesus kind of just sighs. It seems like he's sighing with frustration at all of this. He's already, remember from the end of chapter 8, he's already turning towards Jerusalem. He's already heading towards the cross and he's already started talking about the cross. So he's thinking, I haven't actually got long left here on earth. Are these people ever going to get it? Are they ever going to understand what I'm here for and what they're here for? Um, well, the spirit of the boy reacts as he is brought to Jesus because already that spirit within the boy knows the Lord's authority over it. So let's carry on. The, the father has already said, um, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Um, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. And the spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. And the boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. And Jesus had gone indoors. His disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. Um, 
So again, this is an interesting one because the man is saying, the, the father is saying, if you can do something, if you can do anything. And Jesus says, if, if I can do anything, uh, doubt had been sown, it seems to me anyway, doubt had been sown due to the disciples of Jesus not being able to make the boy well. And so once Jesus' disciples hadn't done anything for the boy, he then kind of looks at Jesus and goes, well, if you can do something, because your disciples seem to have failed. Um, and so therefore, because of their actions or inactions, they have failed. Now, I, it just made me think for a moment. I hope we, you and I, don't sow doubt in people's lives about Jesus because of our actions or inaction, because of something we do or the way we behave, that we don't start making people doubt about our Lord Jesus. Anyway, Jesus speaks with confidence. Everything he says is possible. Everything is possible for the one who believes. Belief is kind of belief opens the channel if you like it opens up a channel remember i said on sunday was it last sunday about believing and the way to salvation is first and foremost about believing that jesus christ is god's son and has paid the price for our sin belief opens up the channel for us to enter into the kingdom of god um and here too jesus says Every, anything is possible for one who believes. That's not to say anything will happen through belief. Saying anything is possible. Belief opens up the channel to the Heavenly Father and therefore we have access then to God and God can do anything. So once we believe, then we open up that channel to God. Uh, who can do anything. It's interesting that the boy's dad says, well, well, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And he's kind of saying, yes, I believe, but help me believe more, because I'm not sure how much I believe. And so Jesus heals the boy, just as we read, and I won't go over that point again. But what I do want to just look at for a few minutes is um, the disciples. The disciples, after this event, they go off and the disciples stop Jesus and kind of go, why couldn't we do that? We tried. What, what was happening? You come down, you say a few words and everything is right. We couldn't do it. Uh, you know, expelling spirits is not like healing a leg, say. Um, we know that Jesus' disciples had got out and they'd done miracles, performed miracles in the name of Jesus. But but like healing someone's leg is a physical thing, whereas expelling a spirit is like, well, it's spirit, uh, a spiritual thing. And Jesus is saying here that uh, there needs to be a strong connection with God to deal with them. He says it's only done through prayer, this strong connection that we have with God that we can have when we pray with him an earnest, fervent prayer knowing god is with you as you minister is vital in dealing with such things is what jesus is saying and i wonder how your prayer life is um let's turn to god now in prayer uh for a, a few moments and uh if you agree with this prayer then you say amen and then god knows that you uh you kind of say yeah that's it. i agree so father god sometimes we come down from a mountaintop experience and we go into a valley and nothing seems to go right when we've come down from the mountaintop and sometimes it's because while we were up in the high place while we were up on the mountaintop and enjoying life and in gaining so much joy and so on we forgot to pray with you and keep on praying we forgot to keep that connection open with you because everything was going right everything was amazing and uh, we need to keep connecting with you all the time whether we are in the the mountain or whether we're in the valley lord we believe but help our unbelief 
so that we always stay close to you, whether it's on the mountain or whether it's in the valley. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to talk with you again. And uh, if you see at the bottom, if you haven't subscribed yet, just under here, there is a subscribe button. If you push that, it means that on YouTube, you will see always when the next video is put up on here, which should hopefully be uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's great to share these with you. And I look forward to uh, sharing a bit more from Mark's gospel uh, very soon with you. God bless you. Uh, talk, talk to you again soon.